Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, tomorrow's UFC card from the Apex, uh, from a betting perspective. And again, when we go over these things from a betting perspective, we are going to be uh, using a very contrarian approach, which is the same type of approach I use for all types of all types of wagers, being sports betting, stock market, which is obviously the source of my main my main success over the last twenty years. Um, just basically the idea that whenever you're dealing with any kind of market where there's a big, um, you really need to, to to think before you you bet. In other words, to have an edge in a market with vig, you really need to know either more than the entire population, not the entire population, but you need to presume that your edge is greater than the vig, or that you're able to at least gauge the psychology of the line. And that second part is what I'm really, really good at. And it's the way I've been able to be successful at all types of wagering like this for a long time. I'm not the type that's going to be so egotistical to believe that I can overcome a, a $1.50 versus a $1.30 line uh, by just knowing more than the sum of the money that's being put into these markets. And I feel as though that that attempting to do that is very, very difficult. Um, not that what I'm doing is simple, but what I'm doing carries with it a lot of experience. And what, what it does is it it forces you to think about wagering and the wagering market a little bit differently. So hopefully for the few people that are actually watching this, um, you're actually learning something about how your mind should work when you're dealing with this, uh, in addition to hopefully getting some good quote unquote picks for the weekend. Um, so the idea is basically, it, it's not that this is a random walk. It's not that the line is completely efficient and that you have no hope. But what you can do again is just kind of, you know, by either absorbing content or by just kind of getting a feel for what people like to bet and what they like to fade is to figure out how much of what's going into a line is driven by things that have nothing to do with the actual uh, predicted outcome. Uh, how much of this is being driven by recency bias? How much of this is being driven by just, you know, people like certain fighters versus hate certain fighters? Um, with respect to props, for example, which we bet on quite a bit, how many of these props people are betting on are based on these binary outcomes that people are just presuming are, exist? In other words, in MMA, there are so many fights that people just are so set on it could only be one of two ways. In other words, it's not just one win versus the other guy winning. People are so convinced that if this guy doesn't win by submission in the first round, then the other guy is going to win by decision or something like that. People really overestimate the narratives that are easy to, to tell, and they underestimate the randomness of, 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 the, of the results that are not so easy to tell. So um, that, that's, that's our approach to all sports betting. And it's also our approach to MMA, and it's been very successful since we started doing this, you know, several months ago. So um, we're going to continue on with this. And one thing I will promise you is that the types of bets that you'll be making, if you follow me here, are really just not going to be rem remotely resembling what you're going to get from most other content. Because quite honestly, I'm almost intentionally fading that. Um, because the idea is that if something's such an easy story to tell that everybody can tell it, it's probably a sucker bet. Well, and I don't like to be the sucker in these situations. Um, okay. And, and you'll see by going through these breakdowns, I mean, kind of my approach and what I'm talking about here. All right. So first, the rules, which, oh, my God, for the first time I remembered to go over the rules uh, before I got into this, is there are 12 fights on the card, and I'm going to be betting each and every fight, um, and I'm going to be betting the same amount each fight. That would be one unit, and for me, one unit is $180. And no, that's probably not the greatest form of money management in the world. But, you know, this is for fun. And, um, you know, what, what are you passing fights for anyway? Come on, you're going to watch the fights. You should freaking, should freaking be betting every fight. Seriously. Um, your EV is probably very slim, if, if, if anything. So you may as well have some fun and, and bet every fight. Right? And I know you're not going to want to hear that from, you know, the people with the spreadsheets and the data points. that like, Oh, we got to just hunt EV all over the place. And I want to pass 11 fights and only bet one. I mean, this is supposed to be fun, right? I mean, you just, you want to watch these fights. You want to have something on them. And so I am going to be putting money on every fight. And uh, 
those are the rules. That doesn't mean that one I like one more than the other. It just means that I'm just weighting them all the same. All right, so first fight, Brady Heastan versus Dana Baccarell. So you have Dana Baccarell, who is has a bunch of knockouts recently. You know, knockout, knockout, knockout. And then in his last fight, he got knocked out, I think, by Christian Rodriguez, I believe. And then you have Brady Heistan, who is a pure wrestler. And, you know, he's coming from the uh, the Ultimate Fighter Championship or something like that, where he lost to Ricky Tercios in the, in the finals. And then he, uh, then he had an okay performance in his last fight. So I'm, I'm hearing probably, if I had to make a straight pick, it's almost certainly going to be Brady Heistan. Because I, again, there's just so many people are just on Dana Baccarell in this spot. And and yet still the price is only minus 150 to plus 130 that I think Brady Heistan just has to be the side here. Okay. Um, what you, the other thing that you have going against you, which is kind of good is that the, the referees have not been very favorable to, um, to grapplers recently. Like if you take people down and don't do much with them uh, with the takedowns, the, uh, uh, they've been giving the benefit of the doubt to the striker. So I think that that's another narrative that people are, are kind of using as kind of a, a backdrop for a backstop for Dana Baccarell in case they don't get the knockout. Um, so I'm probably just going to just, just recommend just to go with break a high stand plus the 130. I was thinking about, about props. And the thing is, is that there's no real high stand prop that people are either getting on or avoiding. So I don't really see any, any, you know, public, uh, public leaning in, in that, you know, against him in any way, as far as the props go. The one thing I would say is that if you are going to play Dana Baccarel, the last thing you want to do is play Dana Baccarel inside the distance or Dana Baccarel um, or Baccarel Dana, whatever in, um, in the first round. Cause those are the narratives that are just being driven by all the binary outcome people out there. If you are going to play Baccarel, I think that the better idea is to play him by decision because you, 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 I think that that is the, the 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 outcome that is most ignored, and it certainly has some upside. Considering also what I just said that you know that strikers do get the benefit of the doubt with respect to to decisions here. But with all that said, I still got to go with the contrarian play. I'm going to take Brady High Stand plus the one thirty, and I'm going to put in one eighty here, just so I remember. Um, we're going to do it for every single fight. All right, next one we have Priscilla Cachuera versus Kareem Silva. Um, okay, so this one is a little bit annoying, okay, because Priscilla Cachoeira has, unfortunately for me, because I really wanted to bet her, become just one of the more popular underdogs throughout the entire industry. Everybody that's out there is just, is just getting on the Priscilla Cachoeira train with respect to, she always fights for your money. That's a, that's a term people like to use when they want to bet somebody. Uh, who just kind of goes wild. Um, she's she's cashed as an underdog before, which is another narrative, which is, doesn't really make too much sense that people are kind of getting on. So unfortunately, I think the Priscilla Cachoeira side is probably the wrong side here. The, 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 the side of Karen Silva, the problem with playing the Karen Silva side is that there's one part that you can't play. You can't play her by submission. And you can't play her inside the distance because the, those are those are the two, those are the outcomes. It's either Priscilla Cachoeira wins or Kareem Silva gets that finish by submission because the idea is that Priscilla Cachoeira has terrible takedown defense and she can get submitted. But if in fact Kareem Silva cannot take her to the mat, then she's going to have a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go the contrarian route. We're going to take Kareem Silva by decision. So winning method. Green Silva by decision plus 330, which is a very, very healthy line. Yeah. Um, moving on. And if I start coughing, which is probably going to happen any second now, I just haven't felt well the last couple days. <laughs> okay. Francis Marshall versus William Gomez. Uh, this unfortunately is kind of a lock. Now, it's not a lock, it's just a lock because. There's just too much going on one side of this. So I I, I saw William Gomez in his last fight. It was basically too they 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 put him in to at the last minute because they needed a Frenchman. 
on a card in Paris, and he was good. I mean, he won. But for whatever reason, like, everybody's all over Francis Marshall this week. I mean, I'm hearing that he's gotten covered everywhere. He get, puts all the pressure on. William Gomez, if any, just kind of backs up or something like that. As if Francis Marshall was going to be like a plus minus 500 favorite here. And, and, and the fact is, he is only minus 200. So, I mean, Gomez has got to have something. So we're going to take a shot. We're going to play Gomez plus the 170. And this is probably just awful. Uh, but that's what we do here. We make awful bets. Uh, Gomez plus the 170 for 180. Okay. This one, we have Muhammad Usman versus Junior Tafa. Um, I, I'm seeing quite a bit on the Tafa side. Um, but the problem is, is that is that Usman's getting some love too because Usman is, they're saying that although he's kind of gotten lucky his last fight or so, he has this wrestling to fall back on. I'm not exactly sure of that, um, but that's the that's the narrative, and that's what's keeping this that's what's kind of kind of keeping this fight close. So for me, um, betting on betting on either of these fights is going to be um, hold on one second. Let me close this. Sorry about that. Um, so with this particular fight, I, I think that the only thing that we could really do if, if we want to be contrarian here, because I think there are people on both sides of this. Most people are on the, the top of side, though. So it's to me, it's either going to be Usman or something like the over here. And I think that's probably what we're going to do, because people are just kind of expecting this to kind of just be this kind of like this heavyweight slugfest. But I think the over or Usman minus 110, I think these are the only things that we can do to really get contrarian, if at all. But let's just have for have, to have somebody to, to, to root for. Let's let's go for Usman minus the 110. All right. Um okay, moving on. Carol Hosa versus Norma Dumont. Um now this is kind of like the the, the non-showcase women's fight. It's really not get, getting too much too much action and not, not it's not even getting that much uh, uh that much analysis you're basically seeing 50 50 as far as uh people's opinions on both of these fighters and it's basically a pick em fight um so we really can't do anything with, with with the sides here i guess the one thing that we can do is is play something as far as like fight doesn't go to decision or something like that. So I have seen probably, I don't know, maybe a little bit more ex expectation that the fight does not finish. So if anything, maybe we could take the under two and a half or something like that. And there we're getting plus 275. This is really not a great fight to get contrarian. It's really not a great fight at all. Um, so just to get something going and to have something to root for again, I do think that most people feel this fight goes to decision. Um, so we will we will play under 2.5 plus 275. Okay, uh Montel Jackson versus Ronnie Yaya. Uh I definitely have an opinion here. Uh is that everybody's hundred percent convinced about what's going to happen. And and that's gonna be that Radiaha, Radiaha's attempt is going to attempt to go for submissions or, or takedowns. Montel Jackson will have none of it and just knock the crap out of him. Um, I don't think life is that easy. Okay. And and I'm looking at this, these, these totals, and while I don't really have it in me to bet Yaya plus the 450, I certainly feel as though I could do something funny like either an over or even Montel Jackson by decision. Because the thing is, is that Montel Jackson, if he is smart, okay, he will not allow this to get to the mat. So I do see kind of a world where he just basically pieces him up on the feet and then Yaya just doesn't get knocked out. And Montel Jackson kind of takes the easy win. I think that I definitely think that's in the cards here. And you see Montel by decision is plus 240. I think that's pretty, 
the only thing that's better than this one, I mean, I, if you really want to, you know what? I think I might do this. Boy, oh boy. If you really want to be contrary, you know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to feel that Montel Jackson does get this to the mat and then wins by submission. I mean, who is doing this? Montel Jackson by submission is plus 900. Can you imagine like Montel Jackson? He's like, listen, all I'm hearing about is all this crap that, what's his name, that uh, Yaya is going to just, is just going to just take me to the ground and then try to submit me. And all I have is like my length and my skills uh, on the feet. I'm, I'm wondering if he knocks him down and then just goes for a rear naked choke anyway on him. But I almost never do this, but I almost want to do both of these things. I almost want to do Montel Jackson win by submission and Montel Jackson win by decision. Can I do that? Am I allowed? It does kind of violate the rules. Um, I guess not. I, I guess I can't do this one. I'm going to think about this, though. Actually, let's, let's put them both up here for now. And then we'll see. That would be pretty, pretty obscene. For 180, we may as well do it. We're definitely doing win by submission. We might do win by decision. How about that? And we'll figure it out before the end of this video. Because I am only going to do one, one bet per... Uh, eh, I don't know. Anyway, all right, let's move on. Ricky Glenn versus Christian Yagos. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, um, and again, this has nothing to do with what I'm doing in DFS. So, Christian Yagos is apparently like everybody's freaking favorite underdog this week as well. I'm just all the money is coming in on him. So for me, I, this is there's just no way I'm doing this. I mean, what, so what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to bet the Ricky Glenn side, um, and it's either going to be just straight the minus one fifty. Or what I might do is just him inside the distance. So let's just take a look and see what, what this is here. So winning method, Ricky Glenn inside the distance. So that means double chance, KO or submission. That's plus 250. I'm going to try that. Ricky Glenn by, by KO or submission, plus 250. Um, I do happen to like Giagos in, in DFS because of this line movement. You know what I mean? Because... All this money's been coming in. All this public money's coming in on, on Yagos. And you got to kind of respect that for the purpose of DFS. And they already made the DFS pricing before the line movement came in. But as far as this, I mean, I'm not going to be on this Yagos scheme as far as as, as betting goes. Right, um, moving on, Jeremiah Wells versus Matthew Semmelsberger. Um, okay, so here's the narratives. Jeremiah Wells is going to go completely nuts. He's going to try to get Semmelsberger out of there. And if Jeremy Wells does not get him out of there, or Jeremiah Wells does not get him out of there, that Semmelsberger probably has the better cardio and takes over late and wins either by decision or a late finish. So those are the things that we cannot bet. So what we're going to do is we're going to bet Jeremiah Wells by decision. Plus 500. Let's go. Um, Isman Lucindo versus Brogan Walker. All right. God, God help me. So here we go. Brogan Walker. This is, this is the other type of bias that people love to deal with. Brogan Walker got smoked by Juliana Miller in her last fight. And Juliana Miller, Okay went on to get crushed as a minus 300 favorite. Hence, Brogan Walker is just the worst. So, Brogan Walker, plus 290. Let's go. Now, again, you think I'm just being just a pain in the neck, but I'm telling you that, that somewhere in here, there is value in this line. Okay? 
Maybe she should only be a plus 260. Maybe, honestly, maybe the VIG is too much. You know, it's a 60 cent line. Uh, maybe even if there is some value in Brogan Walker, it's not enough to overcome the VIG, but whatever. I can't do anything about that. Um, but uh, I definitely think Brogan Walker has more value than is being offered. How about that? All right, uh, moving on, we have, I think I'm sorry for my uh, wrote Jared Gordon versus Bobby Green. Uh, this, no way I could not do this. So but, uh, I'm hearing that Bobby Green, basically this is a layup for him. Jared Gordon, from a style perspective, hasn't really fought a really good striker in a while. And, you know, that's basically the end of the story. Um, I don't know. To me, I was looking at this fight. Uh, Jared Gordon, he, the problem is that Jared Gordon, he just fought Patty Pimlet, and everybody thinks that he kind of won. So I think there's actually a little recency bias in his favor. Um, so I probably can't bet either side with respect to the um, uh, the, 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 the fight line. So I guess what we should probably do is, is find some type of prop here. So Bobby Green round one is, again, that's something that I, I hear some people talking about. Ah, this is a real tough one. Maybe we'll pass this fight. And then that'll open up to get that second fight bet in on the, um, on the, uh, on the Montel Jackson fight. Now let's break in the rules. I just, I just don't have anything in this fight. I just, I, I can't quite pull the trigger. I mean, I guess if anything, I, I would be betting Jared Gordon. So, okay, so let's do that. I just have to follow the rules here. Jared Gordon plus the two. Okay. Brad Tavares versus Bruno Silva. So, Bruno Silva, this is, I, I don't know, this, this looks pretty... Pretty handy to me. Um, Bruno Silva looked just god awful in his last fight. He looked done. He was against Gerald Mearshart, who was just the, the worst striker in the world. All he's good for is a kind of like fluky submission, sort of. And Bruno Silva had an incredible striking advantage. He even looked bad on the feet. Like, he looked so bad. And Gerald Mearshart went on to get KO'd in his next fight in the first round. So and, and yet, Tavares is only a minus 155. We're going to take Bruno Silva plus the 135 here. So, Bruno Silva plus the 135 for 180. Okay. Uh, just a few more. It's an only 12 fight card. Oh, that was it. So, now we have. Um, wait, where are all my. Oh, 12 times. So, Sergey Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades. Um, yeah. So this is, again, a pretty binary outcome. You have, if Sergey Pavlovich wins, it's going to be in the first round. Uh, and if Curtis Blades wins, it's going to be a little bit later. So one thing I will say is that I have seen like just an incredible amount of love for the Sergey Pavlovich side. Um, so we're going to bet Blades. And again, as usual for the main event, we're going to try to do something that is going to get back all the losses that we're going to have for the rest of these terrible bets that we made. So we're going to pick Blades to finish in some round. And let's just going to take a look at the odds and see what round suits our fancy here. So round props. I mean, any of these look good. So the idea is that you think that this could go three or four rounds? I mean, I do think it's possible. So how about we could do blades? This you know this is perfect. Blades round three for eleven hundred. Oh, this is perfect. Blades round three for eleven hundred because what that'll do, that'll get back all the losses from the other twelve, you know the other ones that we're going to lose. Speaking of which, we have to make a decision here about this Montel Jackson thing. Montel Jackson win by decision. Montel Jackson win by submission. We play them both. It violates the rules. All right. We're not going to tell anybody. We're not going to tell anybody. 
will violate the rules, will bet both of those things. So I think both of those are good. Ah, uh, but you know what? Montel Jackson, by decision, I just heard somebody, some very sharp uh, person recommend that. So I can't bet that either. Yeah, so we're going to have to just do it. I I'm kind of fighting here. I know you're like, Eric, Sheets, make a decision already. Just by decision or also by submission? Excuse me, just by decision or also by submission? Well, I'll tell you this. If the submission thing comes in, like I'll never forgive myself. So it's either just a submission one or by decision. All right, fine. We'll do them all. I owe you guys one pass, I guess. So we're going to put all singles, 180 times 13, 2340. I don't know if it's going to let me do it with my uh, while I'm running Zoom, but we're going to try and see. Yeah, it's checking my location. It's not going to let me. Okay, um, but I'll do it as soon as I um, as soon as I log off, and uh, that'll do it. Uh, actually, hold on. Should I re should I remember what we did? Did anybody remember what we did? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Uh, he stand plus the 130. Silva by decision plus 330. Gomez plus 170. That has no shot. Are you kidding me? Usman minus 110. Under in the Dumont fight. Montel Jackson by submission. Good luck. Montel Jackson by decision. Um, we have submission and decision. Ricky Glenn uh, to win by KO or to submission plus 250. Jeremiah Wells plus 500 by decision. Let's go. Rogan Walker plus 290. Eric's out of his mind. Jared Gordon plus 220. Bruno Silva plus 135. Curtis Blades plus 1100. You know what? Maybe I'll get rid of that Mormon Dumont fight. No, no, I'm going to do it. I'm doing them all. I promise. I promise you. All right, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.